One of the types of cancers that you address in the Dog Cancer Survival Guide are perianal, anal sac cancers, cancers of the rear end. And uh, I guess I'll throw this to you first, Dr. Dressler. What are the signs and symptoms that you might be looking at if your dog has one of these cancers? Well, these cancers are similar to some other cancers, like such as cancers that occur in the, in the mouth, in the oral cavity, in that many times they're not noticed right off the bat. And this is for, I think, obvious reasons, and uh, not too many guardians uh, spend a lot of time inspecting their dog's rear end. So most of the time, the tumors are either caught later, after they've been there for a while and they've gotten pretty big, or the veterinarian will notice it uh, during the course of a routine physical. And these tumors, they're, they're growths, and they're right around the rear end, and some of them are benign, and some of them are malignant. And it brings up a really important point, which is that veterinarians really need to be doing rectal exams on elderly dogs, uh, both uh, male dogs and also female dogs, because not all of these tumors are going to be occurring where you can see them with the naked eye. Sometimes they occur deeper and they could be felt uh, with the fingertips as opposed to relying on visual inspection alone. Dr. Ettinger, what are your thoughts on perianal and anal sac tumors? Yeah, it's an umbrella term for a couple of different types of tumors, Dr. Dressler um, pointed out. And so there are the benign adenomas, which, you know, regardless of whether it's a benign cancer or malignant cancer, early detection is so key because even these benign tumors can be really challenging if they're not detected early and they require a big surgery. Some of those are actually associated with testosterone levels. Um, so in some of those big tumors, you can, if the dog is still um, intact, you can um, castrate them and the tumors may resolve completely on their own or at least be smaller and more surgical. And then there's the malignant category. Um, there's the anal sac adenocarcinomas and the sub sebaceous gland adenocarcinomas. And it, they vary in how aggressive they are in their metastatic pattern, but um, it's definitely one where you want to try to find early and then you know, primary treatment is going to be surgery. And in some of these cases, you may be looking at chemotherapy. Some cases, radiation may be required as well. So it can be a mixed bag of, of treatment options. There's also some um, exciting evidence that Palladia has some anti-cancer properties for this tumor as well. So some new options out there as well that could be useful for your pet. Dr. Dressler, what options do you uh, commonly use and recommend for uh, perianal and anal sac tumors? All right, well, let me bounce back. I forgot to mention something uh, which is kind of interesting. Uh, the, the more malignant types of these cancers uh, secrete a chemical signal in the body which can elevate the blood calcium. And this is another pitch for doing uh, early detection testing, uh, especially in dogs that are starting usually over the age of seven, maybe eight, something like that, give or take. And uh, you can see a high blood calcium level, and that can be a flag uh, in some cases, at least, uh, for these types of cancers for your vet to go on a search, and, and many times they'll, they'll turn up in the rear end. But back to your question, Jim, uh, which had to do with uh, what do we do? So for the benign ones, it's really important, uh, or at least the most common benign one, uh, to get your dog neutered uh, later in life because that will help to limit the, the regrowth of the adenomas, the benign forms, the most common benign forms. Uh, and then, uh, uh, in addition to what Dr. Edinger had pointed out, uh, we want to change to a cancer-fighting diet. Uh, we want to bring in uh, plant supplements, phytochemicals, which are called apotogens. Uh, those are certain substances that can help turn on cancer cell suicide very beneficial in my experience. Immune support. Uh, some of these cases will require a, a stool softeners as a part of the therapy because sometimes there can be some difficulty evacuating solid waste uh, in pooping. Um, and we have to pay attention to brain chemistry. We have to pay attention to life quality by deliberately taking steps to decrease stress and improve uh, the life quality of our patients so we can have a, a really good long life together. Tremendous amount of information in the book on these types of cancer tumors. If you have that, I in, uh, invite you to check out the Dog Cancer Survival Guide. And I want to thank both of you veterinarians for joining us today. Dr. Ettinger in New York, Dr. Dressler in Hawaii. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you.